a senior day at the Alamo Dome where UTSA football seniors are honored before playing UTEP in the regular season finale for both. Among the 21 seniors honored were Frank Harris, Brendan Brady, and Dadrian Taylor. First quarter, Miners punch the Roadrunners right in the beat. Calvin Brownholtz rolls out and throws to a wide open Tyron Smith. He's out of Steel High School, 45 yard touchdown, and the Miners go up 14 0. They led 24 zip in the second quarter before UTSA scored 14 points to close out the first half, capped off by this Daydream Taylor pick six, 73 yards to pay dirt, and the Roadrunners trail 24 14 in halftime after a brutal half that saw them lose both Brady and tight end Gavin Sharp to nasty injuries. Now, UTEP led 31 14 in the third quarter, but UTSA responded by scoring the final 20 points. Then Jared Sackett sealed the deal with a 28 yard field goal with just four seconds left and the lead for good. UTSA TSA made its largest comeback in history to beat UTEP 34-31 to finish the regular season 10-2 and a perfect 8-0 in Conference USA. I really don't get on with my guys very much. I don't, but I was mad at halftime. I mean, we, we got our tails physically whipped, and I got after it, and they, they knew I was right. We weren't playing our style of football, and uh, it, was, it was really embarrassing at first, honestly. Coach Feller came in there. Um, he delivered a... Um, a unique speech to us, and uh, I think we handled it well and came out there and executed the second half. A unique speech. North Texas beat Rice today 21-17, and that means UTSA will host UNT for the Conference USA Championship Friday, December 2nd, 6.30 p.m. at the Alamo Dome. For the first time since 2002, Trinity is in the second round of Division III playoffs, hosting Mary Hart and Baylor this afternoon. Crusaders led 10 0 in halftime, and they're pulling away in the third quarter. Kyle King hits Brandon Jordan, who breaks free and outruns the defense for a 45 yard touchdown to put the crew up 24 7, but the Tigers answer back. Early fourth quarter, Tucker Horn slings it to Matthew Kovacevic for a 13 yard touchdown. 10 straight points, and the Tigers get them right back in the game, trailing 24 17 with 11 minutes to go. Final seconds, though, Trinity with one last chance to tie it. Horn tries to escape the pocket, but he's sacked. No timeouts for the Tigers. The clock runs out before they can run another play. And that's how Trinity's season ends. The Tigers fall to the defending national champs 24-17. I knew my guys weren't, they weren't tapping out. Um, and, and again, I'll tip my hat to them. They, they executed a few more plays than we did, but um, you know, we just came out and we started getting into rhythm. And at the end of the day, they've been resilient all year. I knew that they weren't going to give up. Um, so proud of them. Trinity ends their season with an 11-1 overall record. First round of the FCS playoffs today, Elon taking on Furman. The winner faces UIW next week, and that will be the Paladins. Furman rushed for 43 times for 256 yards and three touchdowns to defeat Elon 31-6. So here's that matchup. UIW hosts Furman in the second round of the FCS playoffs next Saturday at 1 p.m. at Benson Stadium. In the Big 12, number four, TCU trying to wrap up an undefeated regular season at home against Iowa State. Opening drive, fourth and two. Max Duggan finds Jaquarius Spivey for the 19-yard touchdown. 7 nothing Horn Frogs. Duggan threw three TDs and a blowout win. 62-14 TCU. Another Big 12 scores. UT needs Kansas to beat Kansas State to play for the Big 12 Championship. Not going to happen. Wildcats win at 47-27. Also in action tonight, Texas Tech defeats uh, Oklahoma 51-48 in overtime. That one just went final. And West Virginia beat Oklahoma State 24-19. If you can only see Lee cheering over here, it's pretty funny. The third round of the high school football playoff wraps up today. Veterans Memorial taking on Corpus Christi Flower Bluff in Class 5A Division 2 action. Patriots trailing 17-14 in the second quarter. Running back James Peoples outruns the entire Hornets D for a 66-yard touchdown. His third touchdown of the day gives the Pats a 21-17 lead. But Flower Bluff takes control from there. Jaden Pelusio finds Wyatt Elwood for the go-ahead touchdown just before halftime. And Veterans Memorial falls 66-42. So the Spurs hosted the Lakers for the second straight night. We got that coming for you later in sports. And Lee, you got some cheerleading moves. Happy, Ooh, she's got, she's a happy Red Raider. I I'm am. only happy because you beat Oklahoma, though. So. There you go. I mean, I At guess. least you can support it. All right. <laughs> All right. We'll see. Um, a woman killed in Mexico, and the suspected killer is back in the U.S. The video evidence that made her a suspect and why Mexican authorities need the help of the U.S. to bring on charges. Food prepared at someone's home and not the restaurant is not the only health violation that led to low scores for this Bandera Road restaurant. Here about three different places roaches were found in this week's Behind the Kitchen Door.
Well, a kitchen at a popular West Side flea market is told to stop making food at home and to get rid of several dead roaches. Well, two Mexican restaurants had problems with repeat health violations. The night team's Tim Gerber takes us behind the kitchen door. Mary's Kitchen, located in the Bandera Flea Market in the 1300 block of Bandera Road, earned a 75 on their recent health inspection. The inspector found cooked brisket and barbacoa was sitting out at room temperature. On top of that, the meat was prepared at someone's home. The inspector reminding the business all food served to customers must be made in a licensed facility or on site. The inside of the refrigerator, freezers, and bins where clean wares are kept needed to be thoroughly cleaned. Several dead roaches were found in baskets holding clean napkins, while more dead roaches were found along the gaskets, doors, and shelves of refrigeration units. A reinspection was ordered. Jalisco Taqueria No. 5 in the 6500 block of Babcock comes in with a 68, a significant drop from their previous score of 84 from an inspection back in May. This time around, they had three repeat violations. Their biggest problem was employees handling food without gloves or hand washing. The inspector observed food prep workers not wearing gloves when making masa while also handling their personal cell phone. Another worker dicing lettuce was caught wiping their hands on a dirty apron, then returned to dicing. Another was seen taking off old gloves and putting on a new pair without washing their hands. The inspector also found several in use spray bottles containing toxic chemicals that were not labeled indicating what was in the bottle. Torito Mexican restaurant in the 5300 block of South Presa racked up eight repeat violations, earning them a 79. Day old refried beans in the cooler were tempted 83 degrees. The beans were condemned. Clean plates had visible dirt like substances on them. The walk-in cooler had rusty shelves and there were buckets of food being stored on the floor of the cooler. The kitchen was also in need of a detailed cleaning. A reinspection was ordered. That's what's happening behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Do you want to know who has good scores and who doesn't? We have a new tool just for that. Scan this QR code with your phone and it'll take you to a new mapping tool. It has the scores for local food businesses. The reports go back six months and are frequently updated. Police in Moscow, Idaho say they're pouring through more than 260 tips sent in digitally. Now more than two weeks since four college students were found stabbed to death inside a home there. The police department asked the public for any outside surveillance video from businesses or homes nearby taken between 3 and 6 a.m. the morning of November 13th. Idaho's governor has authorized up to $1 million in state emergency funds that can be used for the ongoing investigation. Mexican authorities are pursuing their case against an American sus suspected of killing Chinquela Robinson. She died at a luxury resort. ABC's Zoreen Shaw explains why they're facing challenges to extradite the suspect. This morning, a potential legal limbo as Mexican prosecutors seek to extradite an acquaintance of Chinquela Robinson, the North Carolina woman found dead while vacationing in Mexico. Authorities are not currently naming her, but say she is a direct aggressor against the 25-year-old after a video online, too violent to show, reveals Robinson assaulted in her hotel room. Mexican authorities issuing an arrest warrant for that acquaintance now back in America for the crime of femicide, the act of killing a woman based on her gender. On the one hand, the U.S. government is going to take this seriously, and on the other hand, it's not obligated uh, to turn her over. On October 29th, local police reports state that a Baja Resort town guest told medical staff around two in the afternoon that Robinson had drunk a lot of alcohol, a doctor determining she was stable but dehydrated, adding Robinson's acquaintances refused to send her to the hospital. The police report stating the Charlotte native went into cardiac arrest, declared dead by 6 p.m. But an autopsy differing from that report, stating medical officials arrived before 3 p.m., quickly declaring Robinson dead from severe spinal cord injury and a dislocated neck. Robinson's family wants answers. I'm just waiting on that day when I, someone can be arrested. That's all I'm waiting on. So as for those contradictions, Dan Abrams says sometimes that can happen when you have different officials looking into the same case, but it can be problematic for prosecutors. Zoreen Shah, ABC News, Los Angeles.
Singer and actress Irene Cara, best known for theme songs in the movies Fame and Flashdance, has died at the age of 63 at her Florida home. Cara's publicist confirmed the news on the artist's Twitter account, saying the cause of death was unknown. The Bronx-born actress's role in fame in the 1980s, paired with her singing the movie's title track, scored her the Academy Award for Best Original Song. Three years later, her smash number one hit Flashdance, What a Feeling, also won the Oscar for Best Original Song along with a Grammy Award. Coming up, archery is a tough skill to hone, so imagine doing it without being able to see. After the break, what inspired blind archers to take up the sport? It's something you may not know. There are athletes who practice archery who are blind. Take a look. This is a group out of Brookfield, Wisconsin. Dan Smars, who was born blind, was interested in archery. He reached out to a friend who owned an archery facility, and that was back in 2017. Now they have a whole group that meets up regularly to practice and complete their goal, which is to prove that anything is possible. I believe it gives them a chance to be competitive, gives them a chance to do something that, that nobody thought they could do it. You know how the arrow flows? I think that's how life should be. It should always be moving forward, not being stagnant or complacent. Great advice. So how does it work? Archers line up alongside a specialized stand. They put their feet against the bottom and their hand rests near a pin. It helps them maintain form and gives them a sense of direction. Instructors will then help them load arrows and walk them to the target to feel their shots. How cool is that? That's amazing. That's wow. really talented. That is hard to do. Oh, it's extremely yeah. hard. So hard to do. Absolutely. All right, y'all, taking a look outside with live cam here tonight. Temperature 51 degrees. We've got clear skies in place. Hopefully you enjoyed the weather that we found out there today. Yes, it was a little breezy. We'll take a look at those peak wind gusts across the area in just a few. High officially in San Antonio, 62 degrees, about seven degrees below the average for this time of year of 69 and well below the record of 87 because of the low humidity and clear skies. Again, those temperatures are falling pretty quickly here tonight. 47 in Hondo, 46 in Pleasanton, 51 out in Del Rio and 42 up in Kerrville in the Hill Country. Here in town, I do think we will manage to see those temperatures fall into the 40s in Bear County. First thing tomorrow morning, extra layer needed, but then you won't need it into the afternoon. Plenty of sunshine highs in the 70s. We are expecting the humidity to increase into next week ahead of our next front. We'll have a full Look at those details once again in just a few. Well, I was saying earlier to Lee, this was like the perfect weather day for me. I know she would like it. A I like little five bit degrees warmer. warmer. If, if we could, Mia, if you could minor make, complaints. I was yeah, just minor, say, not major complaints here. <laughs> minor complaints. I was, gonna, I was fine with it. Tomorrow, probably Lee is going to be your day. It's still going to be a little okay. chilly in the there morning, but I think in the <laughs> afternoon you'll like it because those temperatures are going to climb into the 70s versus the 60s that we found out there this afternoon. Of course, it was also windy as well. If you did step out for any of those Saturday plans. Taking a look at some of the peak wind gusts across South Central Texas today here in San Antonio over at the airport. 36 mile per hour was that peak wind gust. Stinson clocking in a wind gust of 37 miles per hour earlier this afternoon. Same out in Pleasanton. 35 mile per hour peak wind gust in Kerrville as well. Now of course those winds have calmed down really since the sun went down and we are going to hold on to those calmer conditions as we head into the overnight hours and for your Sunday as well. With those clear skies in place, once again, it will be chilly out there around 44 here in San Antonio around 7 a.m. We see the sunshine that helps those temperatures warm. We're near 60 already by 10 a.m. and then into the afternoon hours. I think for a good portion of the area, San Antonio and surrounding communities will climb our way into the 70s as we head into an any of those Sunday afternoon plans. Still very comfortable out there when you do step outdoors tomorrow. Low humidity will continue to be the theme into the second half of the weekend, but that changes, especially by Tuesday. On Monday, we start to see those southeast winds pump in some more of that Gulf moisture, and we really will notice that on Tuesday, but just as quickly as that humidity works its way back in, it is quickly shoved back out to the Gulf 
after we see our next cold front move through Wednesday morning. So we'll talk about that while we are quiet and clear here in South Texas. It is a different story off to our northeast. That weather maker that brought us the widespread rain and a couple of thunderstorms last night now doing the same for portions of the Tennessee River Valley stretching over to the upper Midwest. Some of that wet weather even down into the deep south near Alabama stretching back over to western Georgia. But take a look up to our northwest. There's a little dip in the jet stream here. This is our next parent weather system that is now approaching far western Canada. What this is going to do over the next several days is track eastward. That eventually will drop our next cold front into the Lone Star State on Tuesday and then that works its way into our area early Wednesday. Temperature wise, it will be a little bit warmer out there over the next few days. Temperatures in the 70s that continues Monday and into Tuesday. Of course, with that added humidity, more cloud cover in store Tuesday as well. Above average for this time of year, but then we see that front work its way in and then those temperatures do look to fall. We'll see those fall through the 50s Wednesday afternoon into Thursday and then those temperatures start to warm back up into next weekend. So of course we'll keep eyes on all of that, but until then it is chilly out there tonight. 53 now over at the airport, 48 up in New Braunfels, 46 Bernie stage area, 43 in Hondo and 54 in Castroville. Those temperatures will fall overnight tonight. Again, tomorrow if you have any outdoor plans that you need to take care of, it's going to be a beautiful day for that. Enjoy it because it'll be comfortable as well before we see that humidity start to work in early next week, guys. I did say I'd like 75, but I will take 70 for me. <laughs> okay, um, just I'm to trying give you a little just bit for you, Lee, just for you. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it. We, pull, we pulled some strings, okay? Okay, it's fine. <laughs> me is the best. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, Larry, Spurs hosting the Lakers tonight. Let's hope they can pull it off. Oh, uh, you know what? I tell you, back-to-back -back games against the Lakers. The Spurs scored a season high but it wasn't enough to put them in the win column. Plus, there was almost a fight in this one. And in World Cup action, Messi certainly saved Argentina. Coming up. Spurs hosting the Lakers tonight at the AT&T Center for the second straight game. First quarter, closing seconds. Winion Gabriel steals the Spurs inbounds pass. He drains a three at the buzzer, and the Lakers are down 33-34 after one. Second quarter, Spurs fast break. Romeo Langford dimes Jakob Perto for a huge slam dunk. Spurs go up 49-41, but Jak hurt himself on the landing and he had to leave the game for good with right quad soreness. Final minute, LeBron passes the Russell Westbrook who hangs in the air to pass it back to LeBron for an awesome alley-oop jam. Lakers led 70-68 at halftime. Second half, all right, so no Jeremy Sohan for the Spurs because he suffered a right quad contusion late in the second quarter. So third frame, things getting testy. Zach Collins down low, blocks Westbrook. Then he fouls him hard on the follow-up attempt. Russ, bleeding from his forehead, attempts to go after Collins, but of course he's held back. After review, Zach was called for a flagrant foul, too, and he was ejected from the game. Russ was just given a technical foul. Lakers are up 106-97 after 36 minutes. Fourth quarter, it went back and forth. LeBron scored 12 of the Lakers' first 15 points. He finished with 39. Keldon led the Spurs at 26. San Antonio scored a season-high 138 points, but the Lakers scored more to win it, 143-138 for the Spurs' eighth straight loss. They've got great character. I, was, I thought they were fantastic. I'm proud of them. Uh, they just keep playing. Uh, doesn't matter what the score is or who's there or who's not there. Uh, they are unbelievably coachable, and they're trying very hard uh, to do what we want them to do. I was just, just thrilled and proud of them tonight. Spurs will next play Wednesday night at 7 at the OKC Thunder. In men's college basketball today, number four Texas played a home game at Gregory Gym in the Horns Roll, UT Rio Grande Valley. First half, Dylan Mitchell steals the pass and he's going to rock the rim for Texas and the Horns lead big 25-9. Late first half, Serge Jabari Rice plays alley-oop with Mitchell and the crowd is going nuts and Texas wins easily 91-54, improving to 5-0. 
take you to Qatar for World Cup action, a crucial game for Argentina as they face Mexico in the group stage. Second half, Lionel Messi shoots from outside the box and he scores for a 1-0 lead in the 64th minute. Messi firing the ball low into the corner of the net from 20 yards. So Argentina wins 2-0 to avoid elimination. They'll next face Group C leader Poland. Mexico will need to beat Saudi Arabia Wednesday to stand a chance of finishing in the top two. Denmark playing France second half tied at one. Kylian Mbappe puts France up for good. He pops up in front of the far post to head the cross home in the 86th minute for his second goal of the match and the defending champs win 2-1 to become the first team to advance to the World Cup round of 16 in Qatar. And two more finals. Australia beat Tunisia 1-0 and Poland blank Saudi Arabia 2-0. Texas A&M hosting number five LSU at Kyle Field. And the Aggie strike first. Devon A. Chain takes the handoff and he makes a sick cut inside for 10 yard touchdown. And the Aggies lead 7 0. Late second quarter now tied at 10. Connor Wigman falling away throws a high ball to Donovan Green for a three yard score. And A&M led at halftime 17 10. Third quarter tied at 17. Tigers quarterback Jaden Daniels, he's going to fumble the ball. The Aggies' Damani Richardson scoops and scores 27 yards to flip the momentum. Aggies go up 24 17. They would extend their lead 38 17 midway through the fourth, and the Aggies get this upset number five LSU 38 23 to wrap up their season five and seven overall, two and six in the SEC. And Aggie fans have to be saying, where was this all season? Yeah, that's what Mia's saying. Yeah, right, right now. She as has she's her pom poms over the there. She's really excited. We got Mia's dancing. Look Lee's dancing. Yeah, we're all pretty happy. Corey, you're dancing because of UT men's basketball. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, all right. Yes, yes. We're all <laughs> dancing. <laughs>